Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and today we're going to be heading to Knott's Berry Farm and SeaWorld San Diego to put their record-breaking dive coasters face to face. We're back with the Versus series. I know it's been quite a while since we've done one of these videos. But I figured to commemorate the 4th anniversary of Hang Time's opening this week as well as the brand new Emperor opening just a couple months ago, it'd be fun to compare and contrast these two dive coasters in Southern California. Before we get going though, I do want to point you in the direction of my great friend Mario over at Mostly Coasters. He's been doing a lot of Versus videos lately and they've been fantastic. Make sure to go show him some love after you finish this video. So, let's get into some of the major comparisons between Hang Time and Emperor. Well, first of all, that track color is nearly identical. It's kind of funny to see that like lighter sky, maybe aqua blue that they share. And of course, the two themes of the ride are pretty similar as well, both including the ocean in some way. As Hang Time is based around surfing in Southern California, whereas Emperor, of course, is based off of the Emperor, Penguin, and diving deep down into the Antarctic. Now, this brings us to probably the easiest comparison to make, these two coasters are marketed as dive coasters. Although they are definitely made by different manufacturers, Hang Time is made by the German manufacturer Gerstlauer, and Emperor is made by the Swiss manufacturer B&M. Why are they considered dive coasters, you ask? Well, they both have a holding brake of some sort, Emperor with a chain, and Hang Time with some friction and magnet work, and those braking sections hold you above the first major drop of the coaster. The drop on Emperor is straight down 90 degrees and 143 feet tall, and Hang Time's first drop is 96 degrees, the steepest in all of California, but it is much shorter than that record-breaking first drop on Emperor. Something interesting that both of these coasters house is the fact that they have a debated inversion count, both due to high banking turns or cutbacks depending on who you ask. Emperor features three inversions, or four if you count the hammerhead turn as an inversion, and hang time features four, if not five, inversions if you include the cutback over the station. With all that though, we should definitely start to head into the five key points that differentiate these rides the most, as I give my personal thoughts on which coaster should win the given categories. Of course, this being a dive coaster, one of those points has to be the first drop. That is an easy one, no doubt. But in addition to this, I'm also adding in a category for positive G-forces, negative G-forces, smoothness, and of course, theming. So let's start it off with how the rides start that first initial drop. This is where I think it's going to be quite debatable in the comments. Of course, make sure to leave a comment if you think I get anything wrong. But both rides start out with quite a fascinating lift hill. Emperor is a 45 degree incline all the way to the top 153 feet in the air, three feet higher than hang time if you're curious. And when you reach the top, you'll get this absolutely gorgeous view of downtown San Diego and the entirety of Mission Bay all the way to the ocean. It really is a stunning view, and I highly recommend riding the ride just for that alone. Before you know it, you'll be tilted down quite a ways before you plummet 90 degrees straight down into that first drop. I will say this is where the row count definitely can make a difference between the two types of drops in this category. As Emperor has three rows with six seats per row, I will say the front row gets that perfect view all the way down to the ground. Whereas the back on the other hand doesn't really get that view, but it gives you some amazing airtime on the way down to the drop that the front can't offer. Well, the second row gets none of that. So you kind of miss out on the view. You also miss out a lot on that airtime. So that's kind of a bummer. But that leads us into hang time's first drop. And to get there, you go up 90 degrees. That's right. You go straight up all the way to 150 feet in the air, which this lift hill alone is pretty insane if you ask me, before you slowly crest and immediately hit that drop. So you won't get as great a view all the way around. But 
with how this drop is made, all of the four rows and all of the four seats per row get the perfect view outward as the entire train sits on the same incline. Once you're released from that holding break though, that first drop will give you some amazing airtime no matter what row you're in, but if you're in the back especially, it gives you some immense airtime. And of course, at the bottom of that drop, although it is quite a short drop, gives you a really cool hand chopper with some of the track right above. For this, I think it just depends on personal preference, but for me, I'm going to have to give this point over to hang time. All right, well, let's move to that next category. This is for negative G-forces or forces that push you out of your seat. So let's start with hang time this time around. Of course, you get a phenomenal amount of airtime coming down that first drop. That is no lie. But something that this ride does really well is give you a little bit of those negative G-forces while you're in the inversions, especially that first negative G stall loop. It gives you about two seconds of complete weightlessness while being upside down and of course later on in the ride you have an amazing speed hill that goes right over the ride's entrance that gives you some incredible ejector airtime just forcefully pushing you up out of your seat and the last notable moment of negative g-forces is going into that final brake run now let's head down south to emperor at SeaWorld, where we'll find a good amount of airtime especially on that first drop and maybe a little bit of negative g-forces in the zero g roll and potentially a little bit in the flat spin but outside of that this ride really doesn't focus on the negative g-forces so the point is definitely going to have to go to hang time well let's head to the positive g-forces now where we'll start with emperor i gotta say this ride is really good at making you gray out it has a lot of positive g's kind of forcing the blood to rush out of your head and down to your toes especially at the bottom of that first drop as well as all of the valleys in the coaster itself pretty much in between every single inversion there's a great moment of positive g-force and even going into that final break run you'll get some good positive g's as you make that swooping right hand turn hang time does have some good positive g-forces as well but it's a little bit more sparse the most notable moments though are definitely right after that first drop and immediately following the speed hill as you traverse the ending cobra roll but i gotta be honest emperor has more positive g's throughout the ride so i'm definitely gonna have to give a point down to sea world's newest attraction this moves us on to smoothness where we're gonna start with hang time and of course we immediately have to talk about the smoothness and some of those rough patches throughout the entirety of the experience. The first notable bump will definitely be at the bottom of the first drop and is a little bit more noticeable on the wing seats, aka the seats on the very ends of each row. Then the next rough patch will be in that corkscrew element. At the very top, there's this little bounce back to the side. Then in the cutback, there's a little bit of a rough patch as you're heading towards the speed hill, but then that's the last moment of shakiness on the ride. Emperor isn't perfectly smooth either though. There is a little bit of a rattle throughout the ride. It's not really that bad though. And I can't really remember any specific spots that have any bumpiness or jitteriness that are really out of place. So for that, you know where this point's going. It's going down to Emperor. Oh boy, of course we're all tied up with one category left and that is theming. Now I can't lie, these rides both have some very sparse theming all around the queue as well as the ride itself. But if we start with hang time here, you'll notice that there is a lovely roof and shade structures covering the entirety of the queue and the station. There's also little bits of theming around the queue itself, kind of giving off a little bit of a beachy vibe, including surfboards, lobster crates, and a lot of seashells. But I will say the biggest plus for hang time and its theme is the beautiful lights that encompass the entire entirety of the ride's track. This is a night ride you won't want to miss at knots whenever you're there as it gives a truly spectacular view of the park at night. As we head to Emperor though for the theme, 
There's only really a tarp over the station as well as some umbrellas over the queue line. And besides that, there's maybe some plant life and some small patches of wood chips that kind of seem to be snow from a far distance. But if you told me this ride was themed to an octopus or the deep dark abyss of the ocean, I would completely believe you unless I saw some of the signage around the area as well as in the queue. So I will say the theming for one of these rides is definitely a little bit more obvious than the other. And for that, hang time is getting the final point, meaning hang time, at least in these five arbitrary categories that I totally didn't just make up on the spot a couple minutes ago, wins this battle of the Southern California dive coasters. But with that said, I want to throw it to you. Which do you guys prefer? Do you love the graceful swimming on Emperor? or more of those rougher waves on hang time. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And of course, if you're curious which ride I prefer, I'm actually not really sure. I have a lot of love for both of them, especially after covering them both for so long in their construction processes. And I would love a ride on either of them any day. But with all that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, Make sure to subscribe. We've got tons of content coming, including all the rides at SeaWorld San Diego ranked by you and Knott's Berry Farms coasters ranked, rated, and reviewed by me in the next week or so. So definitely keep an eye peeled for that. But until then, we'll see you on the next ride.